Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society. And I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about making uh, TMJ splints and using them. I won't do too much on making them, but I will show you how we uh, make them. And then I'm going to go into a rather detailed use of one on a, a pretty severe case that we had in TMJ here. Uh, this young lady had a, a stressful job and she also uh, had a, a position there of the jaw that was pressed on the retrodiscal tissue. So we had a double cause for the uh, problem that we have there. So let's get uh, going. It's a rather long case. I've got a lot of pictures on it, but I'll try to go through them as quick as can. Now I'm not going to take a lot of time showing you how to make them, but actually we we take the patient in there and we advance their mandible or let them bring their mandible out to where it's comfortable. I mean, just close it like that. They're on my own, it hits here, but then I chew back here. So you want to make the splint in the position where the mandible is comfortable and so you mark the teeth in there where it is. Now you make a roll of acrylic and you put in the uh, mouth up here and you bite into that mark or you mark the teeth with a little uh, marking pen where you know you close into the same position. And I don't use a lot of fancy equipment or anything in doing that, but just let the patient sit with their head in a normal position. Don't tuck your head in this way or lean back this way. Just have it in a normal position and open and close your mouth. And I would almost bet that 50% uh, of the people out there look at this. If you do this, your bottom jaw or your, your jaw will be a little bit further forward than it is when you chew. And if it's a lot of distance in there, this is where the condyle goes back and presses into this retrodiscal tissue and, and gives it a, a fit and you have trouble with it. And this young lady was having a lot of trouble with it. And, uh, but she had another reason. Her father was a, a dairyman and he had gotten sick and she was in college, and she had to milk 40 cows in the morning and 40 in the, after, in the evening, uh, in addition to her college work. And uh, she came in from Wichita Falls, and we worked on her. So she had a reason for having a jaw joint problem. And uh, this uh, splint we made with this acrylic and had her bite into that position and pushed push this ramp up here and we drilled holes in it so that you could breathe through the ramp. Uh, if you were breathing through your mouth, you could uh, breathe through this ramp. So it gave you a little relief of it. So here is a type of retainer we kept in there to hold the jaw forward. And there's a ramp right up here that uh, meets the, brings the jaw forward as she closes too with it. Now here's uh, this young lady, a very nice looking young lady, but a pretty serious uh, looking person. She was having pain with this jaw at this time, but she could smile and had a beautiful set of teeth and everything. And this is the uh, retainer, or this is the ramp uh, splint that we made for her. And then you can't run around during the daytime with this in your mouth, especially at college, stuff like that. So we had to, uh, we always make a lower one. And we've got a space in here that these teeth touch when the jaw is forward. And so the load is back in here on the teeth rather than on the temporal mandibular joint. And so on the bottom one, when she wore it, we had to have the same thickness of material back here where she got support back in the uh, posterior teeth when she closed her mouth. 
Now, this was made by uh, Dr. Holt, and I didn't, I don't use those uh, little clasps in there. I just kind of put the critic over the teeth more, and uh, he puts a uh, little clasp in the, in the lower retainer like that. So here, when she puts the upper retainer in, it brings her jaw out to here. But normally her jaw is somewhere back in like this, and that's pressing on this retrodiscal tissue, so we're bringing it out here. Now we have to use it and see if we stop the pain and everything. Then we'll try to put the teeth together where they function in this position. And that's the thing in the nutshell. If you uh, just, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's kind of the way it is. Now here's the lower, uh, the lower uh, splint she wears during the daytime in school and everything. And the other was the upper splint. Now here the two splints are together. And uh, we'll go ahead here. Now here is the jaw position uh, without the splint in. And you see the upper and lower teeth in the posterior part of the mouth do not meet up here. Uh, I mean, they've got a gap in them. She said she had a closed bite, so when she moved her jaw forward, she's got this opening back in the back like that. If you didn't have the splint, uh, it would you wouldn't press on this tissue, uh, but if you bite without the splint in there, you bite in the forward position, the, the load is right here, and then the other load is back on the retrodiscal tissue or the condyle where it closes into the uh, fossa. And we're going to show you some pictures, some good, good pictures of the condyle where it's in the fossa in certain positions. Okay, here is the gap that's in there. And uh, when you've got the splint in, you've got support in here. So you don't put any load on the joint. You put the load back in here, even when your jaw's in the forward position. That's uh, something I need. You, you just need to know that for sure. This is the upper arch, and this is the lower arch. Her teeth looks good. Now here's the lower splint in, and you see it's just as thick back in this area as the upper splint, and it holds the, uh, the pressure is in this area and not on the condyle and the fossa back in the, the back. All right, now here's this. Uh, this is the regular orthodontics. We level the bite at this point, and I'm going to run through this pretty quick. Now, when we put the, uh, after we wear the split a little while, we'll cut the back part of it off, and we'll leave the molars back here free. And this part will take the load. These teeth will erupt into the upper molars back here. And when they get to where they take the load, then we take one side off. And with these teeth erupt in, and then we may take the other side off and let them run together. That's how you come out of the splint into the just getting your teeth together without the splint in there. You don't want to run around the rest of your life. You could use a splint, but uh, if you want to really finish it up good, you've got to take the splint out, and you've got it's that's the uh, problem getting it back onto the uh, teeth. Now that's the real problem. Uh, now here we're doing this, and we have put still got the ramp on the upper retainer. And I'm going to run through this pretty quick. So we cut this off at the back, you see, and this molar is erupting into this. And the same thing on the other side. When this molar gets to where it can take the pressure, then we'll remove one side, and the molar carries the pressure out. Then these teeth erupt together, and then we go over and take the other side out too. So it gets kind of... Uh, complicated going in and taking it out. Maybe this is why so many uh, people who do orthodontics don't pay any attention to the uh, TMJ. It's a, 
it, it, it you got to deal with it for a while. That we've worked with it for about 25 or 30 years, and we were able to get everybody out of pain with it. Now this molar has been cut free off of this pad. It was one time the pad was over here. We took the pad off, and now these molars are erupting into the upper molars. And when both of them are up there good and are taking the load, we take one side out and we wait for these teeth to erupt in and take the load and then take the other side out. And so that's uh, the way we come out of the splint onto your natural teeth. Uh, so there's a whole heck of a lot in this uh, video to, um, to learn. This is a mirror in the uh, cheek over here, so you're looking straight at this. Now this molar has to come into contact, and we're contacting right here. This is where the load is. We still keep the pressure off the condyle and the fossa in doing this. So this gets pretty complicated. Here is the models again, kind of the way we uh, start her. We've got her finished out pretty good. And this is her retainer later. We keep her wearing an upper retainer with a ramp in it. We make a shorter one though, and she'll, as long as she stays out of pain. Now here we got just showing this pad. We've cut it off back here, letting these teeth erupt together uh, so that they take the load, then we can start taking the pads off. Or you can take the pads down a little bit at a time if you want to, uh, diff different ways of doing it if you have trouble with it. Okay, here is her condyle, and I can't, uh, where we started out, the condyle was fitting. This is a good picture of the condyle, but it was too far back on this retrodiscal tissue. And so I'm going to go through this. So we put this splint in, you see, and we advance the, the mandible down here. And you can see where the condyle is here and where the condyle was here. Now, when it was here, it was hurting. And when we moved it from there to the front up to that point, it stopped the hurting. So anyway, we're going to have to keep her jaw in this position to keep the pressure off of this retrodiscal teeth. This is the ear opening her part of it right here, right close to it. And there it is where she's opening her mouth completely out. Here's the fossa and the condyle is sticking way out here. These are some good jaw joint pictures, and this is the splint end, you see, and, and the starting and the splint end and opening, and here we go. This is the right with the splint out. After we finished and got her to hold in that position, the condyle stayed in that forward position. This is the lower splint in the mouth. You can see those clasps that I don't use on the lower splint myself. Uh, this is the uh, cephalometric. We've got the splint in the mouth there. All right, I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Now these are, it seems like in her case, we ground this down on one side and let these come together gradually. Most of the time, we just take the whole thing out on one side after the molar comes in contact back here to take the load. You see, it's that much higher than the other uh, tooth right there. Let's see. Okay, here we All right, there, those are out. And there's the ramp. And that's the uh, night one and the daytime one. And here's the lower... Uh, splint in the mouth and the x-ray on that and here we're finishing this thing up we took a ton of pictures on this case but we got her out of pain I took one side off you see and leave this and when this side's taken 
we we first took the pressure on the molars then when that was doing we took the uh, splint off the side we took the cover off over here and then this was holding it up this and this and this and now we take this side off over here and we'll come out and I think that's the end of our video so I appreciate you watching it and I hope you get something from this I'm sorry it's pretty uh, complicated but I hope you can can study this and take it and you can handle some pretty complicated orthodontic cases. Thank you for watching and I'm going to stop right now if I can get this over here.